2.3 billion people in the world have inadequate sanitation. Nine out of 10 people in rural areas open defecate. Women and children in slums are too afraid to use communal toilets at night, forcing them to use plastic bags which are discarded on the side of the road. All of this is contributing to 800 children needlessly dying every single day. Whilst teaching in Ghana and travelling around India, I've seen the issues surrounding sanitation firsthand. Facilities mainly consist of pit latrines, which are cheap to build but require emptying, which can be costly. As a result, local governments and NGOs are sometimes forced to shut them or let them overflow, spreading disease. And the government sees sewage networks with centralised treatment as the pinnacle of wastewater technologies. However, this model was designed by the Victorians. It's inefficient, combining surface water with various polluted waste streams, diluting them and polluting water, our most valuable resource. These systems are also expensive to install and to maintain. In the UK alone, we have a 100-year replacement cycle on all of our pipes, resulting in vast water leakages, which many countries cannot afford. It's about time we start to innovate and develop new solutions so countries can avoid this outdated approach. And this is where my research comes in, as I'm looking at decentralised wastewater treatment that allows you to treat waste locally in its concentrated form. Using principles derived from the circular economy, we can recover water, nutrients for fertiliser production and energy that can be used by the locals. I am designing microbial electrolysis cells. Now these cells have two compartments. On one side you have the carbon anode, which you grow bacteria. And these bacteria break down the organic compounds in water, just like they do in nature. And on the other side you have the cathode. You apply a small electrical charge to the cell, and this gives the bacteria and the reactions inside take a little kick up the backside, just like your morning coffee, and it helps speed up the whole process. Now the combination of that electrical charge and the biochemical reactions means you can start producing hydrogen on the cathode. And this hydrogen can be used as a cooking fuel, replacing coal or wood, which result in death and air pollution. Now I'm just at the start of my research, working in lab-based systems, but I founded a social enterprise and I've built partnerships with NGOs, and we're looking to develop a pilot study system that we can test in Ugandan refugee camps. A farmer enters his tractor petrol tank into a field and kills all your bacteria. What happens next? So the bacteria actually naturally grow um, in all different types of soil, water, so we could take soil from a different area. We could, um, it depends where you can take it from a different type of field, a different location, and we can then retreat Petrol? it. Pollutants? It, that would actually kill the bacteria, yes, but if we then went to a different source, we could then look at redoing the system. And this would be like for sanitation water, it's not going to be treating water from rivers. Um, and eventually I want to change sanitation from what looks an economic drain by recovering the valuable um, inputs from there, being able to make increased investment in this sector so that these people have the tools and the opportunities so they can create jobs. What, what, does, it, what does the solution look like physically? Um, so the solution will be in multiple reactors that are stacked so we can completely... <laughs> so. 